This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this section, I'm going to introduce you to a very powerful facility within Carrera, and that's duplicating of objects. And in the process, we're going to make ourselves a little fence model. I'm going to start by dragging a cube into the scene, and that's going to be the post on our fence. So if I just adjust the sort of size of that, that's OK to be our fence post. Now we're going to duplicate that. Select Move. And you can see there that there's a keyboard shortcut of Control D or Command D on a Mac. That's worth remembering because it's going to be very useful to us in just a moment. But I'll use the menu option on this occasion. And now we've duplicated the object. You can see that in the main working display, there's no real change because the duplicated object is in exactly the same place as our original object. But you can see on the list down here in the properties tray that there are in fact two cubes. One important point to note here is that those two cubes are two instances of the same object. So if you have a very complicated object, you can duplicate it many times but Carrera still only holds one of the models in memory. So it can be a very memory efficient way of producing a complex scene. And we can have a look at the objects tab here. We can see there is still only one cube there, but we have two instances of it. We've got the second one selected so we can just move it away from the first object like so. And I'm just going to move it so that there's a bit of a gap between the two objects. Having done that after a duplicate command, the move and rotate and scale options that you have done to that object are remembered. So if we then duplicate again, it duplicates with those transformations in place. So if I just this time use the keyboard shortcut and do a control D, you can see that there is a relative move there that's been duplicated from the first moved object. So to create our fence, all I have to do is press Ctrl D several times and we get a fence. I'll just add an extra one, which is going to form the cross beams. So I'm going to rotate that one. I'll use the shift key, so two shifts are 90 degrees. Move that back. I'm just going to offset that slightly so it's behind the others and scale it along that axis. That's about right. So yeah. If I just move that up. Now because we've been doing lots of complicated moves, all of that is not remembered by the duplicate. So if I do a duplicate now, then it only remembers the kind of last move that we made. And there we've got a fence object. Now, no matter how complicated that's been, and you can see that there's lots of cubes there, but we still only have one object that each of those instances are referring to. And you can see that if that was a really complicated object, then that would be a very memory efficient way of creating a complex scene. What we can do now is to just drag to the right of all of those cubes. And if we press Control G to group those together, we've then got a fence group very simply produced. Now what I can do now is to duplicate that again. So duplicate that, I'll then offset the second copy. Maybe rotate it around. Just zoom out of that scene a little bit and then duplicate again. So you can see that it's very easy to produce very complex scenes using things like grouping and duplication. I can actually now group those together and that forms then a single object that I can duplicate again. So you can see that we can have nests of groupings with that group consisting of three groups and that referring to our original cube. And again, 
still only one object within that scene.